Greetings and salutations, fellow Dark Shadows fans. My name is Alan Gallant, and uh, I'm an original Dark Shadows fan from around 1967, around the time that Dark Shadows became a vampire soap opera with the introduction of Barnabas Collins to the show. And um, in those days, I had a limited collection of a few of the items that were put out for sale related to the show, including some paperback novels uh, and a few other things but primarily i had the model kits the mpc model kits that were put out that featured uh, barnabas collins in a threatening pose and of course in an equally threatening pose the werewolf chris jennings and i had those model kits back in the day they had some glow in the dark parts and so on and i put them together the best that I could, and I was kind of limited in what I could do, but I had them for a while. And then, of course, inevitably, they got thrown away or sold as I got older. Uh, now, somewhere around the late 1980s, early 1990s, I was reintroduced to the show because of the um, MPI home videos. Uh, had a local, I lived in Bangor, Maine at the time, that's where I was born and raised. Um, had a local video store that carried the videos and got uh, four new ones every month. So I would go down uh, faithfully and, and uh, rent them out and uh, reacquaint myself with a show that I hadn't seen in so many years. And it's kind of fun because a lot of things I hadn't remembered or had remembered wrong, which happens as you get older. Um, um, but Anyway, it just so happened that I started watching it again at that same time that the, the video uh, tapes were being issued by MPI Home Video. That's when I also started collecting things. So I got a lot of things that I didn't have when, when I was actually watching the show as a kid. Um, but one of the things that took me a long time to get again was the model kits because they, they hadn't been reissued back in the 90s. Uh, they weren't reissued until just a few years ago. And so recently I bought the, um, the double kit that they sold, which has both model kits in it. And um, that model kit um, cost me about $20, $25, I guess, something like that. And uh, I uh, proceeded to build the kits and I now have them again. So what I wanted to do today is show you uh, in particular how I put those kits together, um, what it took, um, and show you some dioramas that I built for the kits as well, and give you an idea of how much it cost me to do it. So uh, let's get started. So here we have the Vampire Barnabas Collins and the Werewolf Christopher Jennings. So these are the repops of the old MPC model kits from the uh, late 60s, early 70s, and it's a lovely box. It's uh, got some nice pictures of the werewolf and um, Jonathan Fritt as Barnabas Collins. And uh, the back of the box is very nicely done, and we can see um, here the alternate heads that came with this kit. Down on the bottom, uh, with the glow-in-the-dark models, you can see the original heads that came with those kits. And, of course, those are the ones that we kids had back in 1969, 1970, when we put the model kit together. And this kit comes with those original heads, as well as two very beautifully done, brand-new uh, interpretations and much more accurate-looking interpretations to my way of thinking. I still like the old ones for nostalgia, of course. So I have both sets of heads that I can interchange if I feel like it because they're not glued into the models. Um, but these uh, resin heads, the newer ones, are definitely more realistic, I guess you could say. They're, they're very much closer to the actual um, Jonathan Frid likeness and the Alex Stevens werewolf likeness from the actual show. And as you can see... He is um, fully painted, and I've done some brushwork on him. He is not, as I said before, uh, super professional, but he's not bad. Uh, and, and he's certainly good enough for um, what 
my purposes would be as uh, an amateur and a fan of the show. Uh, you've noticed that I've created dioramas. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, and here is the Jonathan Frid, uh, the new head, uh, resin head with the old pop body and with the base. Uh, for both of these model kits, I went ahead and uh, created uh, a list of things that I needed. Uh, obviously, I, I actually use super glue with these kits because I knew that I was going to, um, except for the where movement was necessary, I was going to be doing some uh, spackling, light spackling to uh, cover uh, some of the, uh, as best as I could anyway, some of the uh, seams. Uh, again, I'm not a professional, so and I wasn't really interested in making it look like, um, you know, a, uh, a Leonardo sculpture or anything like that. I was interested in getting it to a point where it was acceptable to um, my sensibilities and my abilities as, as a model maker. So this fellow, um, after I put him together with uh, super glue and spackling and sanded him a little bit in certain areas and made sure that he could stand upright uh, on his base, um, and then I took um, a, um, a kit of uh, t uh, Testa paints, model paints, one of their kits that um, has um, basically matte finish colors, and they're all dull colors. They're military style colors. Uh, and basically why I use those is because I wanted muted colors, um, flat blacks, um, you know, muted browns, uh, that sort of thing, um, because I wanted my dioramas to resemble something in terms of being at night. So when I painted these models, I had that in mind. I wasn't going to paint them with a lot of bright colors that would contrast with the idea of the dioramas being at night. Um, so I, this particular test uh, was like, it's, it's like a flat military, uh, but I also added colors to that. Obviously I needed a flesh tone. Uh, so I got a, um, and these are water-based paints by the way, and I also got a white, a white white that I needed. And I couldn't, that day I could not find a water-based white white. So I used a, uh, an oil-based um, which was fine. It, it was, uh, I only needed it for the fangs, uh, the whites of the eyes, and uh, a few other detailed areas, plus um, using it to do things like brush the base with a variety of colors so that the stone work would look uh, relatively good. Uh, now, uh, if you go up to see what we've got here with our werewolf, he, yeah, I'm just going to pull him out of this base really quickly. He is also painted with the same color palette so that he is, whoops, excuse me, um, so that he is more or less uh, going to work out with that nighttime thing. Now you can see I've dry brushed his head, which works pretty well. There we go. Uh, you can see the dry brush there and the whites of his eyes and his, and his uh, lower fangs as well. And, uh, used a slightly lighter brown on his ears so that they would stand out against the rest of the dry brushed werewolf hair. Okay, um, these models were both painted um, flat black, the entire model. And I used that as my base because again, I wanted everything to sort of mute out and be darker. And uh, the Barnabas Collins model in particular, the Jonathan Fred, Frid um, likeness, uh, head, of course, you get the dark hair, and you also, the, 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 the clothing uh, from the show was typically a little bit darker, um, particularly the jacket that he wore, the Inverness cloak that he wore, and um, the pants, and so I decided to go relatively dark with that, and uh, that seemed to work out fairly well. Now, what I did with these dioramas, if we go back up here, on the top of my bookcase is you can uh, see that I've created a two-piece diorama, which that says Eagle Hill Cemetery on it, which of course was the cemetery on the show in which the Collins Mausoleum resided. Um, I used um, wood scrap 
from uh, Scene Shop. And then I went to a um, couple of different craft stores and got the little wooden fleur de lis in the wood uh, the wood section uh, of the craft store and also this fencing which was pre-made uh, pre-wired wooden fencing and put it along the front if i pull back you can get the full effect here or at least a uh, partial effect uh, these are two sections they join uh, on that left-hand side of the Collins Mausoleum entrance. That's the beginning of one. And so here we see the full effect of the, the double diorama with the model kits residing inside them as they were designed to do. Um, let's take a little closer look at some of the paint and so on that we've done on the diorama. Now, uh, I basically used scene paints for the larger surfaces of the diorama and also use some of the model paints as well. And here we see um, there is also, if you look closely up in this corner past the werewolf's head here, you see a bat flying in the darkness. Uh, that's one of the bats from the kit. Uh, here's another one. And I had um, a second uh, Dark Shadows Barnabas Collins kit. So, we had a bat over here with the moon. Now, as you can see from this, um, again, I've got a lot of sort of foliage going on here. Got that at the same place that I got all of this um, wooden frou-frous, including the fleur-de-lis and the fencing. And if you look down here, I'm also using this lizard from one of the kits. And instead of using this sort of pathway that I have over here with all the tombstones and so on, I decided to go with a grittier look. So I took some sawdust and I mixed it with some glue and laid it down and then threw some of the um, bits and pieces of the turf on top of it to give it that kind of windblown autumnal look. And as you see here, I also have all of this lovely turf, which is nothing more than it's uh, miniature grass and it's, it's moss is what it is. Basically you buy it in, in the various um, craft outlet stores like Michael's or Joanne or one of those places and you can see that it uh, it adds quite a nice texture to the whole thing and then we've got a large stone over here with its own fencing around it uh, this foliage here on the back of our stone there uh, and up in here you can see this lettering it says Collins so it's the Collins mausoleum in case anybody didn't know that and you can see down there, there is a, a little rat on the steps leading up into the Collins Mausoleum where, of course, Barnabas Collins' coffin resides in the secret room. And so there you have it. This is basically um, how it was done. Now I'm going to tell you how much it all cost in total. Uh, the model kits, of course, I spent about 20, let's say $25 on them. And... The combined cost of the two dioramas, which are about 30 inches across by about 12 inches deep in totality, with all the wood, the styrofoam, the specialty items from the craft stores, the glues, the paints, all of that sort of thing, about $100 for that. So $125 is what it cost me to put together this whole thing. So thanks again for joining me for a few precious minutes of your time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got some information out of it that uh, maybe you can apply if you decide to uh, create your own uh, Dark Shadows MPC Repop model kits. Uh, if you liked it or you thought it could use some improvement, let me know. This is kind of a stumble through, so uh, be kind if you can. Uh, we're all here uh, interested in the same thing. So thanks again, and uh, maybe we'll see you again. Take care.